Hey folks, welcome back to another episode in my new series called Painting Minis with Sam. I want to thank you for joining back once again. I want to thank you also for the uh, huge cry of support that I've received so far about um, how much you enjoyed the original video. Again, I am not a professional, so again, this is just kind of like an everyday uh, dude's take on how to paint minis and I used to paint minis way back when I was in um, college almost you know over a decade ago I used to paint them all the time with when I was in a 40k but uh, I dropped out of it just because life happens and uh, I think between then and over that decade or, or 11 years or so I maybe painted one or two models um, you know and those were at conventions when I was just bored not knowing what to do and then, oh hey look a model pen I get a free model okay I'll do that uh, I'm just now getting back into this so uh, I want to thank you all for all the tips that you've been giving on the comment sections and all of that kind of stuff uh, those are all cool things that I'm going to try to implement uh, here in the next few episodes um, those things that I think will fit my style and, and will help it be a little bit more efficient and that type of thing. So keep those coming. I really do appreciate it and I appreciate you watching. So let's get back into it. Here we go. You guys were asking what kind of brushes I use and that type of stuff. And quite frankly, I went and bought to Walmart and bought some, uh, some tester paint brushes. This is the one that I used in the last video to, uh, to do the uh, the Retributor armor, the gold color that I used last time. And then um, these are some Army Painter brushes that came in the Mega Paint set that the Dice Tower purchased for me uh, to start uh, painting the models for Age of Sigmar and possibly other games later on in the future. So uh, as far as the uh, paints that I'm using, uh, these are ones that came with the Armory Painters um that we're going to be using a little bit of different uh attachments and stuff like that get the leather brown and then we use uh, i use a uh, matte white for a lot of highlighting you know dry or the true dry brushing later on we're going to be touching up that uh, darker retributor armor which is the retributor armor that uh, we used last time we're going to uh, dry brush some of the uh, liberator gold onto it so that it uh, looks a little bit shinier uh, lead belcher is what we'll use to uh, give the base what we used rather to give the base coat of the um, The heads of the hammers and then uh, we'll be doing some room fang steel to uh, you know highlight those lead belcher parts and then uh, flayed one flesh is um, uh, The scrolls and that type of thing if you'll see that uh, these guys right here these little uh, scrolls that are coming off of the armor pieces and different attachments those are actually supposed to be like parchment paper so uh, you'll see later but I give them a base coat of uh, leather brown and then uh, touch them up with uh, either skeleton bone or flayed one flesh and then finally give a detailed uh, you know a high uh, a very fine dry brush of matte white to just let it pop a little bit so you'll get to that a little bit later but right now i'm using citadel paints and uh, army painters they are probably the more expensive um, uh, of the paints that are out there uh, rob oren uh, and his segments are going to be talking a lot more about that kind of thing so i want to point you in his direction now real quick before i know what uh, uh I, i've shown pictures of these guys before on um Twitter and uh, Facebook, but I just wanted to give you an idea of kind of where we're going to be going with these uh, miniatures that I'm doing, the Retributors. Uh, these are uh, the, the two uh, squad leaders of the other two squads that I have already painted, and I'm just showing you these because, well, quite frankly, I like the way they look, but, uh, you know, they're, they're not perfect, but uh, they do have a pretty good, um, pretty good, uh, I don't know color scheme I guess um, and uh, these these are the uh, this is the kind of, uh, of, of work that I'm going to be trying to produce with uh, with these other guys these uh, retributors so this is kind of a, not a not a completely end in game project but uh, still pretty close because 
I, I, the only thing I really have left to do with these is uh, the basing, the flocking, and, and uh, what kind of uh, base I'm going to give them. So that gives you an idea of, of where we're going. Okay, when we had finished last time, we had finished basically the base coat of the uh, Retributor's armor, and then we had also done the heads of the hammer in a, uh, a used, let's see, what was the name of it? Uh, lead Belcher. Isn't that a great name for a paint? So we uh, basically had Retributor armor uh, for the base coat on here, and then we had Lead Belcher for the hammer heads. We're also going to start today with Lead Belcher and uh, touch up some of the other places on the um, models that need that same kind of a base coat. And then we're going to go from there, see where our journey takes us. So let's get into it. Okay, so as I stated earlier, we're going to go ahead and start touching up some of these uh, other places that are going to get the same uh, colors as the others. So let's go ahead and get some paint off of here and just lay it down. And then one more good glob. And close that up. Again, not even close to uh, being a professional here, so uh, I am still open to any other techniques you guys might have. But um, with the, uh, again, now we're not dry brushing here. We're actually wanting to get good coverage and good, um, uh, good uh, color down. So again, I like using the uh, flat, you know, that has a straight edge on one side. It just helps me a little bit more. Um, so we're just going to come in here and uh, paint the chain mail or whatever that might be called in there. And then we're going to be coming back later and touching it up with a little bit of a different color. But again, you don't want to get too much paint in there. You, you still want all that detail to pop, uh, but you do want to get good coverage. So don't be afraid to uh, wipe some of it away uh, with your brush if you do get more on there than you originally wanted. And we're not really necessarily worried too much about touching other parts of the armor as well, especially this very intricate part here that has a hammer over it. Not really worried about it because I can always come back and touch up the gold that's around it. So again, if you make mistakes, remember it's paint and uh, you have other colors of paint over here, you can always come back and uh, fix any mistakes that you made. So don't, don't worry about making mistakes. Just make sure that you come back and fix them. So just remember, main thing is here to have fun. If, if the techniques that I'm showing you are not working for you, by all means, try something else. <laughs> I, like I say, I can't, I can't tell you enough how much of an expert I am not. So please don't think, even for a second, that you need to do it exactly the way I'm doing it. I'm just showing you a way to do it, not the way. Well, I wasted a lot of paint here. I got too much out. Now I added some water there because my paint was getting a little gloppy and I didn't want it to uh, transfer onto the model. So I added some water to it to thin it out a little bit. Now again, since the, the gold is in there, Already on the bottom, you don't want to thin your paint out too much because then it won't cover the gold up. You'll see the gold shining through, so be careful about that. Feel free to twist the brush every once in a while. Well, that's one of the reasons I like having straight edges on a brush instead of a round brush or something like that because you can, you can usually flip it around and it'll do a lot of the detail work for you in keeping, as far as keeping a straight line is concerned and that kind of thing. Now, not always, but a lot of the time you can, you can, you can make uh, something look really good just by letting the uh, paintbrush do the work for you. So keep that in mind. All right, so the first thing I'm doing here is I'm going to be taking um, a leather brown and adding it to a lot of these different colors, uh, a lot of these different parts of the model. Now, the leather brown is uh, going to be for, uh, first of all, I use it for the, hand, the hilts of the, uh, of the hammers. Uh, GW has this weird red looking, orangish looking color, didn't really like it, so um, that's kind of what I'm uh, changing for me. That's the good thing about 
uh, detailing a model is that you can pretty much paint it however you want. It doesn't really matter unless you're entering some type of weird stringent tournament or something like that. So anyway, uh, we're going to take uh, leather brown and just uh, uh, hit, uh, first of all, the, the hilt of the, of the uh, hammer. You guys are probably saying hammer before I did. Almost like cheering me on to say hammer. Because uh, sometimes I don't really do that good of a job. In choosing the right words. And again, don't worry so much about making a mistake. It's paint. You can always come back and fix it. Just get out there and do your best. So that hammer hilt is base coat is done. Then now another thing that I use the uh, leather brown for is is the parchment. I use the leather brown as a as a base for these parchment ribbons that are that are on the model. And since this is the darker color. I go ahead and work that into all of the crevices because the uh, I'm not really worried about covering everything in the crevice because if the crevice gets a little darker, that's fine. That's just going to show more definition. It's a little bit too much. So, but again, you don't want so much paint on your brush that you're covering up and filling in those crevices. You just want to uh, have a good base coat down so that later on, uh, when you come back and do the ba the, the lighter colors, um, there's a good dark color under there that kind of holds those holds those other pieces in. I am of Irish descent. I am not Irish. Um, I am an American. But uh, my family is of Irish descent. And so, as such, I like to uh, give uh, some of my models every once in a while a little bit of an Irish flair or something other. You know, I did a Texas, a Texas flair one time with uh, some of my models. And so I'm going with a, uh, a little bit of an Irish theme to these retributors here just, just to have fun. Uh, like a so, and I'm going to have to do more than one coat, that's for sure. Doing more than one coat is usually the better course of action, so that you don't have a lot of paint accumulating on the model. And the detail is still there and it still pops well. I think the mailman just came, as Bruce. Bruce is my 75 pound American Bulldog. He always lets us know when the mailman or somebody else is in the yard. So we thank him for his service, but it does get annoying every once in a while. The, uh, the uh, shoulder pauldron's done uh, pretty well, pretty well covered, and uh, my hand didn't shake too much. Now again, as you can see, like on this on this shoulder right here, I covered up that hammer and. Uh, uh, lightning bolt design that's because we're going to come back and touch it up with a, with with other colors later on but we had to get that base coat on there so that uh, it would pop really good so now we're going to uh, try to do the uh, edge and come back and do this I changed brushes because that other one was just too big so again uh, like I said you can you always have the ability to change whatever it is that you're doing it's your project so Take your time and do it the way you see fit. All right. Now, the thing about this loincloth is that it goes around to the back, so it's hanging down there as well. So we need to get in there underneath his rear end. And back here, it's going to be a little darker because uh, there's going to be a lot of shadow in here. So uh, you, you want to get a good coverage, but if some of that black from the base is coming through, that's okay because, again, there's shadow... Uh, supposed to be underneath here so it's not going to be a real vibrant pop of a color um, uh, but we'll highlight where we do want the color to come through so again just do the best that you can and 
again, what looks good to you, that's what matters. But try to use uh, good strokes, not short, choppy ones, because you want it to be smooth as it goes on there. Okay, so that is it for this episode. I hope you will uh, join me back next time as we uh, finish up our Retributor Squad. We are almost finished with the painting. Of course, the uh, flocking and, and basing and all that kind of stuff is going to be uh, later on down the road after I get everything else painted, but you get the idea. I hope you are enjoying the progress. We'll see you next time. See you on the flip side, folks. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.